In this video, we're going to discuss entropy and chemical reactions. So at this point, we've discussed entropy as far as phase changes are concerned and looked at a couple of other different processes, but we really haven't discussed uh, entropy changes as far as chemical reactions are concerned. So I wanted to give you a few tips on how to be able to predict whether entropy is going to increase or decrease in chemical reactions and talk about how we calculate the entropy of a, of a reaction, the standard entropy of a reaction. Okay, so really when we're talking about chemical reactions um, and predicting the change in entropy, or at least the sign of the change in entropy for a chemical reaction, there's really two things you want to consider. The first is, um, is there only gases involved in this process, right? So if there are only gases involved, right? So if you have a reaction where it's, you know, two gases reacting to form another gas, right? Then, um, then basically the entropy is going to depend on the number of moles of gas that is produced, right? So it's going to be based on the number of moles of gas produced. Right, so I have an example of this to the left here. So, um, so both of these uh, would be gases, right? The reaction that we're looking at is actually the decomposition of nitrogen tetroxide um, into two moles of NO2, right? So basically what happens here is that you have uh, N2O4, right? These blue spheres are the nitrogens. The red spheres are the, uh, are the oxygens. And basically you have a cleavage along this nitrogen-nitrogen uh, bond that breaks apart this molecule into two molecules of NO2. So, uh, so when this happens, what you do is you're actually going to increase the number of gas particles, right? You go from one mole of N2O4 to two moles of NO2, right? Every one of these N2O4 molecules is going to break into two molecules of NO2. So in this forward direction where uh, the molecule is decomposing and breaking apart into NO2, the entropy is actually going to increase because you're increasing the disorder, right? You're increasing the randomness, right? They're no longer, these two NO2 units are no longer bound by this nitrogen-nitrogen bond. There's gonna be less structure for this system versus if these NO2 molecules react and form N2O4, that would be a decrease in randomness, right? So in the forward direction here, the decomposition, it's going to be an increase in randomness because you're increasing the number of moles of gas Whereas in the reverse direction, this uh, synthesis of N2O4, this will be a decrease in the entropy because you're de uh, decreasing the amount of disorder, but by forming this nitrogen nitrogen bond, right? So if it's only gases involved, then it only depends on the number of moles of gas that are produced. If you increase the number of moles, increase the entropy, decrease the number of moles, decrease the entropy. Now, when there are multiple phases involved, then it gets a little bit more tricky than just counting the moles, right? We talked about in the first video in this unit that, uh, that you know, gases are going to have more entropy than liquids, liquids more entropy than solids, right? So those rules apply here as well. So if you have multiple phases, so if you have multiple phases, then production of gas is going to, um, going to involve more entropy, right? So production of gases increases entropy more than liquids and solids. Right, so if you if you have some liquid that's uh, that's reacting and producing a gas, right, that's going to be an increase in entropy. So uh, so let's actually look at some examples and predict the whether the entropy is going to increase or decrease. So uh, so let's look at the problem in the bottom left here. So basically, this problem is just asking you to predict the sign of delta S for each of the reactions. So you don't have to calculate anything. You just have to look at the reaction and be able to tell whether there's going to be an entropy increase or an entropy decrease, right? So let's look at A. So A, we have hydrogen interacting with oxygen to form two moles of H2O. 
right? So the question is, is it going to, is this going to increase or decrease the entropy? Well, if we look at it, we have all gases involved, right? Everything here involved is a gas. So we really only have to deal with the number of moles that are being produced here. In the reactants, we have three moles of gas. They react to form two moles of gas. So that's going to result in more order. So that's going to be a decrease in entropy, right? Because you're producing less gas than you're starting with, less moles of gas than you're starting with. So that's going to be a decrease in entropy. So that's going to be a negative delta S, right? Entropy is going to decrease in that case. Okay, so let's look at B. So for part B, we have this, uh, this chromium ion, right? This ionic chromium solid that is decomposing into different constituent parts, right? So it's decomposing into these three parts. Um, it's starting out as a solid, right? And this decomposition produces another solid, but it also produces a liquid and a gas. Now the liquid and the gas will both have higher entropy than the starting solid, right? So this would definitely be an increase in entropy. So this will be a positive delta s right that would be an increase in entropy okay c uh c we actually just have a phase change right we have uh kbr solid that's going through a phase change becoming a liquid right obviously we talked about this one in the first video this a liquid's going to have a higher entropy than a solid so that means we're going to have an increase in entropy here so that's going to be an increase and for the last one, we have nitrogen gas reacting with hydrogen gas to produce ammonia, two moles of ammonia gas, right? Again, all gas is involved here. Um, so we start off with four moles of gas when you have one mole of N2, three moles of H2, and you're ending up with two moles of ammonia gas. So this is going to be a decrease in entropy, right? Okay, so, um, so you should be able to based on these basic rules, you should be able to evaluate a chemical reaction and be able to tell whether the entropy is going to increase or decrease without necessarily having to calculate anything. However, we can calculate the uh, total, the standard entropy for a chemical reaction. So, um, so the standard entropy for a chemical reaction can be calculated in the following way, right? So you'll have a delta S for your reaction, and I'm going to use a circle in the superscript, just like we talked about in the last class with, with enthalpy, right? The standard enthalpy was written out like this, All right? So, um, so same thing here, the standard entropy is written out in this same notation. So uh, the, standard, uh, the standard entropy for reaction is going to be just like with the standard enthalpy using Hess's law, we're going to have a sum of the number of moles of the reactants times the standard entropy of the reactants, of the products, my bad, start with the products. Right, so the number of moles of the products and the standard entropy of the products, right, minus the sum of the number of moles of the reactants times the entropy of the reactants, the standard entropy. Right, so like I said, just like from the previous course when you would calculate the standard enthalpy for a reaction, this is the same exact thing. We're calculating the standard entropy for a reaction, right? So this would be our standard entropy. Right now, notice that when I put this, uh, this entropy in the sums, I didn't put a delta, right? And I did that for a reason. So these uh, entropies are actually very special entropies called the absolute entropy. Right. And basically you can get these from any thermodynamics table. Most textbooks, most general chemistry textbooks should have these absolute standard entropies available to you. Um, and the reason why we don't use delta is that for entropy, unlike other thermodynamic variables, we actually have a lower bound to how low the entropy can go based on a theoretical uh, model called the perfect crystal. 
right? So basically what we have shown here in this figure are uh, different molecules that would be involved in a crystalline structure, right? And you would have a dipole of a positive and negative end, right? Um, what I have here on the left side of this, um, of this chart is that perfect crystal at zero Kelvin, right? At the absolute zero temperature. At zero Kelvin, the uh, structure will be perfectly ordered, right? Perfectly ordered, right? If you have no thermal energy, you have no temperature for this crystal, it's perfectly frozen, perfectly solid, then this will be a perfectly ordered structure. This will be the only state that you would have for this system. However, when you increase the temperature, anything above absolute zero temperature, anything above zero Kelvin, you start to have fluctuations in the structure. Right. So you'll have fluctuations in the structure and that will actually increase the entropy. So the entropy will not be zero for any structure above zero Kelvin, whereas for our perfect structured crystal, the absolute entropy would be zero. And that's actually huge for us. For any other thermodynamic quantity, we don't know how low it can go. They can have negative numbers. They can go infinitely into the negatives, right? Uh, but entropy isn't like that. It has a lower bound. The lowest possible value of entropy we can have is zero. So, uh, so we have an absolute lower bound for this quantity that allows us to define an absolute entropy and that way we can, you know, write these entropies without having the delta S here, right? This would actually be the absolute entropy since we know that the lowest it can go is zero, right? Now that's actually a statement of the third law of thermodynamics, right? This is actually a form of the statement of the third law. So the third law of thermodynamics states that at zero Kelvin, a perfect crystal has an entropy of zero. So at zero Kelvin, a perfect crystal has an entropy of zero. Right. And like I said, this is huge because every other thermodynamic variable, we don't know how low those quantities can go. We don't have a defined lower bound. Entropy is different. We actually have this well-defined lower bound for entropy that allows us to define an absolute entropy, whereas we can't define an absolute enthalpy or an absolute free energy. Now, like I said, the perfect crystal is just a theoretical, um, a theoretical model, right? We really can't reach exactly zero Kelvin, right? So, um, so a perfect crystal is really a theoretical model, but there are very ordered real systems that have very low entropy that give a little bit of insight into this um, absolute entropy concept. So I've shown two of them here. So this is, the, and both of these are, are carbon structures. So they're all carbon atoms. Um, on the left is the structure of diamond. And on the right is the structure of graphite. These are very well ordered structures. Now you might look at this diamond structure and not think so on first inspection. But if you look closely, um, this is just a repeating structure of tetrahedral uh, carbon arrangements, right? You can see a tetrahedral structure here tetrahedral structure here, right? It's just a repeating unit of tetrahedral carbon atoms, right? Very, very structured. And graphite um, has a very structured, um, a very uh, ordered structure as well, right? The carbon atoms um, arrange themselves into these hexagonal structures, right? And these repeating hexagonal structures are actually held together by weak uh, non-covalent interactions as well between these sheets of hexagonal structures, right? So both of these are very, very ordered, right? Um, their entropy values reflect that. So if you look at a table of entropy values and you look up the entropy value for graphite, graphite has an absolute entropy of six joules per Kelvin per mole, right? Very low absolute entropy value. And for diamond, it's even lower. So the absolute entropy for diamond is going to be two joules per Kelvin per mole. Right. So these give you a little bit of insight into, you know, how order, very ordered structures have very low entropy. And that it, that's in accordance with what we expect from the third law of thermodynamics, where we know a perfect crystal would have an entropy of zero, right? So diamond is actually pretty close to the perfect crystal, right? You've got only two joules per Kelvin here. 
uh, whereas the perfect crystal would be actual zero at zero Kelvin. Okay, cool. So, um, so that gives us some insight into uh, how chemo how we can evaluate entropy and chemical reactions. In the next video, we're going to dive into this equation, start to use it to solve for the entropy of some reactions. So, in the next video, I'll show you how you can actually use this equation to calculate the entropy, the standard entropy for given reactions.